Welcome to Moonbeaming, a podcast about magic, creativity, the tarot, lunar living, and more. I'm your host, Sarah Faith Godestiner, and I'm so happy you're here. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Moonbeaming. Hello, lovely angels. Lovely babies, babes, lovely listeners of all stripes. I'm so happy you're here. I'm stoked to be back with all of you during our hot witch healing summer. That's right. I've coined it. It's what I've been doing. It's where I'm at. Hopefully you're there too, feeling the feelings and healing the healings. And you can join me anytime. You know, something tells me you're already there. I wanted to put in your ear on your radar first that I am doing a cord cutting ritual August 1st. I'm doing a tarot workshop on the five constellation and teacher cards. That's going to be rad especially if you are a tarot nerd, towards the end of August. And then in September, I think that I'm teaching live for the last time in 2021. And it's my really powerful Embodying Abundance four-week workshop series that, wow, I taught it in June and it changed my life. No joke. It's actually still changing my life. I'm still implementing and integrating everything that happened. And I know it changed the lives of many of the participants as well. So if you want more info on that, the dates and links and all the things, please sign up for the newsletter. It is where you'll get all the details. And if you want to be on the list for Embodying Abundance, you can also email the studio. As always, Patrons of this podcast and my work get to find out about these events and classes first. And those at the Magic Maker level get a discount. Yes, they do. So you can check all of that out. Uh, patrons, you will have all of that info very, very soon. As soon as the doors open, you get to hear about it first. This episode is really special because you've got an intuitive, that would be moi, talking to another intuitive, the one and only Natalie Miles. Natalie is a friend of mine. She is the real deal, incredibly gifted, and she is someone I can text things about being an intuitive and going through dark nights of the soul and transformation. And she just totally gets it. I don't have many friends I can do that with because actually, shockingly, a lot of my friends are not psychics and witches for a living. Some are for real, but a lot aren't. And I think that people can forget that intuitive folks, channelers, psychics are going through our own versions of life that are quite similar to people who do not consider themselves those things or who don't do those things professionally. Once in a while, yeah, I can predict the future for myself. But to be honest, the more I live openly as a psychic, and or intuitive. I know people have stuff around the word psychic. I personally love it, but I get it if you're not quite there or we'll never be there. I'm here. I support you. Okay. But the more I live openly as someone who does this kind of work, the less I get specific answers about the future for myself. And I think that is because ultimately intuition is about living in the present moment, making decisions from the present moment. And that's just one of the things 
that Natalie and I talk about in this episode alongside so many other incredible topics. Natalie Miles is a channeler for The Collective, psychic medium, writer, speaker, and host of the top spiritual podcast on iTunes, So You Think You're Intuitive. And now she does another podcast called Doorway, which I'll link in the show notes. She's also the author of the book, You Are Intuitive, Trust Your Truth, Take Back Your Power, which you definitely have to get. I think it's a must have. I think it's pretty foundational. We talk more about it in this conversation. We also talk about power, about how Natalie's gifts have changed over time, how she began channeling. We talk about ethics and spirituality. I also give Natalie a reading where we get into career and love and it's super fun and she gets some really incredible and auspicious cards. If you're curious about developing your intuition, about taking back your power and trusting yourself resolutely, then this episode is for you. I love Natalie, and I know you will too. So here we go. This conversation with the one and only Natalie Miles. Oh my goodness. Have we got a treat for all of you Moonbeamers today because I have a fantastic person here she is so talented. She is so authentic. She is brilliant. She's really someone I admire and am inspired by and feel connected to. And I felt that the moment I met her and I cannot wait for all of you to get to meet her as well. I have the beautiful and talented Natalie Miles with me today on the podcast. Welcome, Natalie. Oh, what an introduction. Thank you, sweetie. Oh, yeah, so much love. I thank you. (laughs) I'm I'm sure a lot of folks know who you are already, but if you wouldn't mind just introducing yourself, sharing a little bit about who you are and what you do. Yeah, um, many hats, many hats, many labels. Um, I'm a psychic medium. I'm a channel. I'm a writer. I'm a podcaster. I'm a creative um yeah so many and the list continues <laughs> you ride horses you forest bathe <laughs> yeah, yeah communicate with horses yeah all the things <laughs> yes so we're gonna get into all of it so you have dedicated many years of your life educating thousands if not millions of people across the world about intuition and about how they can access their intuition. You have your tremendously popular podcast, So You Think You're Intuitive. You have now your new podcast, Offering the Doorway. You wrote the book on intuition, right? Uh, Called You Are Intuitive, correct? Yep. You are intuitive. Trust your truth. Take back your power. (laughs) Yeah. So like you've made it your mission to destigmatize, demystify the intuitive arts. Why are you so passionate about this subject? Yeah, for me, it's it's a, well, it's a gift that we all have. It's a gift that we can all connect to and use. And I think it was very much when I first connected to my gifts. Um, you know, I went to my first ever psychic circle around when I was like 16 and gave my first ever message, which was amazing. But there's also, as I kind of grew up, I, I wasn't relating to anyone out there. There was very much like people I speak, was speaking to and they're like, have you heard of this person? Have you heard of this person? Have you read this book? Have you read this book? And I was like, no, I don't really relate to any of it. And so it kind of became a mission to create and share the content or create and share, you know, the ways to connect that I really wish that I'd had when I was first connecting that made it feel grounded, approachable, like in this planet versus it feeling like 
um, I don't know, I had to go into five dimensional world or leave a planet to actually be like, no, it's around here every single day. So that was, that's the mission is to, you know, guide people and show people that to access your intuition, it's, it's here, it's you, you are the intuitive vessel and body. And yeah, and that's, that's, that's the mission to make it, to, to make it, yeah, approachable and accessible. I know you're just speaking from your own experience, so I want to have that caveat, but I do want to sort of get into a couple things you said right there. And one is this, this kind of, for lack of a better word, ungroundedness that can sometimes get aligned with channeling or intuitive abilities. And I'm wondering if you have thought about why that is like why is there that disconnect kind of from the body or um from sort of practicalities like have you thought about that because I honestly similar to you like I actually don't know very much about the spiritual world I don't know very much about like the spiritual industry um but I I have heard some really for the lack of a better word, stuff out there I really don't resonate with. You know, it just isn't my experience. Not to say it's not their experience, it is. But I'm just kind of wondering, like, there seems to sort of sometimes be almost a disconnect between being in our bodies, tuning into the self, and like what intuition is. Have you thought about that at all? Yeah, it's fascinating because, yeah, and it's been coming up for me recently as I've been thinking about it, how as humans, especially when we're using the word transcend, like the word transcend gets used so much in the spiritual community. And it's like the image and the energy of using the word transcend just in the energetics of the word makes you feel like you have to leave something like you're either going, you're moving up or you're moving beyond something. And so this energy is always about like either future projecting or moving through something or beyond something versus it actually being like, how do I embody this? How do I go deeper? How do I go into the earth? How do I make that the, the energy? And it also being that, that, word of you know transcending also means that it's not on this planet like it's somewhere else like that you have to go into a different planet a different cosmos a different dimension versus like we're human beings and if we can't make it relatable to what's happening in the world whether it's you know as human beings and things we face politically socially and you know our day-to-day lives then what's the point And this is why I love you. This is why like, I'm like, yes, of course. And this is the other thing I wanted to talk about is the subtitle of your book and the word power. Hmm. Because I think that's another real key component to intuition that I guess I'll just go right into it. And because I want to hear what you think. So I've been thinking about this. Again, we might not have any answers, but I sure do have questions. Um, this idea of intuition or this thing I see, not this idea, this this actual um, phenomenon that I see with intuition of people doubting it, um, demonizing it, um, stigmatizing it, being afraid of it and power, you know, this idea and also this like idea that I see or that I grew up with. So you were very lucky. It sounds like you grew up with people who were open to different ways of exploring, you know, one's own intuition and magic and all this stuff. And but where I grew up in Hartford, Connecticut, was not very um, magical, I would say. And so I got a lot of information about intuitives and psychics that were they were um, they were thieves, they were scammers. Um, don't go near those people, don't give them your money, like all of these things that I personally, in my own process had to like, look at. And I think that's actually what made me not do what I do for a very long time, because I was like, they're bad. Like I, you know, like I didn't, and we'll get into ethics and integrity, uh, later, uh, of course, but like, I'm just sort of wondering the, the word that keeps coming up for me now, looking back, having done this for so long, and I know you've done this for so long, and I know that you've had other jobs as well that weren't, you know, being a channeler for the collective, 
um, like a day, like a desk job and, you know, sending a PDF and all of that stuff, which you might still do. I still do that too. So, uh, but like, it's that thing about power. And I was wondering if you could like comment on, on any of any thoughts you have around, um, discrediting intuition and psychics and intuitives and all of that and, and power. Yeah. So we're, it, it's, it, what's really fascinating is, yeah, we're mass, we're massively conditioned to fear being on our own power. And there is, when we, when we're conditioned not to trust ourselves, not to trust our own feelings, emotions, especially as being highly sensitive and we're kind of gaslit into not trusting what we feel, especially growing up as kids, especially being in the environments that, the, that we're in, that can really make us distrust ourselves. So from a young age, we're already being told that that those feelings aren't correct or that thing you, you thought you saw in the corner, oh, don't be stupid because that doesn't, that isn't real. And so that's there. And then we, with, with psychics, it's very much this element of, well, as any industry, there's going to be some people who aren't in integrity, whether it's a doctor, whether it's a lawyer, whether it's a politician. Um, but the, um, the, the notion of power of what, what, what they want me to share right now is that, I mean, the power systems and structures of our planet are massively changing as we're where we're at right now, but we're not trusting our own power within that. So we're, we're seeing these, like, we can see the corruption in the power dynamics that are there in the world. Um, and we can be quick to judge them, but at the same time, we're not trusting our own energy and our own power that that change is actually possible. And so <laughs> just to bring it down on the power dynamics and because the psychics and intuitives have, you know, can have this well of power, like can have this well of power and this energy that, um, that, that scares people because it actually makes them feel that they're not in their own source of power. And that's why, I was this also part of the mission because it's like we all have this source of power and that's why you know psychics and intuitives have been feared for so many for generations upon generations through the ages because it's like well you know we don't want a load of people walking on this planet like tapped into their power because shit that means that those who wield the power who have the power who use it to oppress people like what have they got <laughs> um, so yeah i mean that's where we're at right now on this planet is we're in you know the power systems and structures are, are, are crumbling are going to be crumbling more around us and that's why we need to be connecting with our intuition more absolutely and as you were speaking what also popped out at me was i feel as though a lot of highly sensitive people a lot of intuitives a lot of very compassionate people, artistic people, creative people have um, not the best idea of power, right? Yeah. Like, like mm -hmm. they don't want to be oppressive. Yeah. They don't want to be like that person who abused them or harmed them or like the police or, you know, all of these ways we see how corrupt, but that's not actual power. No. That's abuse, but people call it that's hierarchy. That's, you know, um, uh, that's fear. That's scarcity. That's greed. That's control. That's people not dealing with their stuff and like not being able to even see that. That's not actual power. No, it's distorted. It's not real. It's, it's fake. It's, yeah, it's distorted power. And that's why when we connect to our true innate power, you know, as, as you share around abundance and things flowing in when we're really in that kind of level of it not being distorted. And it's in, in truth, in truth, power in truth. That's, you know, that's when things really shift. I wanted to talk a little bit about channeling. And, you know, I know that uh, one of the roles, one of the titles you call yourself as a channeler for the collective, which I absolutely love, by the way. And I wanted, again, I wanted to get into like, for me personally, I, I, I don't, you were very different, like you don't have the same blocks as I do. But for me personally, 
took a long time, like I said, not only to accept my intuition, my psychic ability, but even to try to address groups of people, like in the spirit of service, you know? And even sometimes to this day, I feel a little bit, you know, I'm unsure or I'm like, who am I, right? Like, who am I to share these things? So I was hoping if you wouldn't mind like sharing what that process was like, did you get messages that you had to share? Like, when did you sort of feel like, okay, I can both channel messages for individuals and for greater groups of folks? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, For me, it's, I've really realized that as a kid, I loved to be on stage. I did a drama degree um, and it was fascinating that, I realized that all my gifts and skills and talents that I grew as a kid were to be used in this way. And I thought that it meant that I was supposed to be an actor or I was supposed to be on stage doing, you know, rehearsing lines. And then in my, um, in my twenties, in my late twenties, just before I had my Saturn return, I kept having this recurring dream where I was on stage and, um, I didn't need to know the lines. And so everyone, I, it was, I, and I didn't need to know the lines and I was just stood there and there was a microphone. And every time I went on stage, I just knew exactly what to say. And, and like the performance like happened. And so I was like, Oh, this is really fascinating. Like what's this to do with? Um, and they kept showing it to me in, in dream state. And now I'm like, well, that makes sense because that's what I do. There's a mic. I don't have any lines. And I just, you know, when I can do group events, that's what um, I love to do. And for me, it was the the confidence of really seeing. And I think, and it started with the individual sessions, knowing that when I used to see the themes that used to run through, a, you know, used to run through a client day where it was all the same themes, all the same topics. And it was very much like, okay, well, if this is these four people and I can also take some of the stuff that I'm channeling through to people as well on the themes and the topics, that this is a broader collective energy that needs to be shared too. And then that led for me personally into just, um, sitting and writing, like what wanted to come through. And I would just be like, okay, well, what's, what's needed for this month? What's the energy for this month? What's, what does that look like? And that process has evolved for me as well. Like it used to be, um, that I would film it and then I would just, and I'd have like a couple of notes. And then I went into a process where I was just write, like just really writing it as prose and coming through, but I also do it while I Yoni steam. So I also, I also do it now. Um, you know, I ch- actually channel channel it through the portal <laughs> as well, like through the body, and the power of doing that through the body. And I've noticed a real shift in wow. too. So yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's. I want that. So this is also something I want to get into. Do you have a ritual? Do you like, because I think people are probably curious about this. um, Do you have a meditation you do? Do you have a prayer you do like before you channel? How do you know you're channeling? Like share a little bit about all of that. Yeah. So for me, it's very much like, it sounds like me in my head. It's just my thoughts. And I literally just start writing. So um yeah, I'll like create, I'll have the herbs and I will um, light a candle. And then I literally, there's nothing that I will like say. I, I'll just say, well, oh, I do say, I kind of say like, share what is the energy for June? What is the energy for July? I'm like, I'm here to receive it. And um, I literally just start writing. I just literally start writing it. And I <laughs> I type it on my phone. I literally put my phone on airplane mode. And I literally just sit there um, and, I, and I type and it just, it comes through. And then when it's time for it to stop, I, that's what I, um, yeah, that's what I do. And then I, um, because I have worked the energy like through my womb portal, I will then also at the afterwards, I will, I will self pleasure and I'll orgasm and I'll use an orgasm to cut the energy cords of the collective of what I have just poured through my womb space. Okay. You are officially next level. You are like, okay, cool spirit. I'm going to go do me. I'm coming back in. I'm 
jacking off in the energy of release <laughs> on all levels. And it's going to feel really great. Uh -huh. Do you feel like you're channeling spirit, source, your guides? Like, do you have mm -hmm. some sense of the energy that you are connected to as you channel? Yeah. So for me, I'm someone that doesn't really label it. I'm very much like I know certain channels have like, I'm channeling the Pleiadians or I'm yeah. channeling the for me. It's very much like I'm channeling guides, ancestors, source energy, collective energy, the earth, uh, you know, earth guides on this planet from, you know, the uh, more earth bound guides. I'm very, very much like, yeah, I don't go into the details of who they are that's just for me and every time anyone asks me that I'm just like and people are like well why why haven't you asked why haven't you gone into details I'm like that's not my mission like I know yeah. that's not my mission is to have something specific yeah no I just was curious because I know again some people do like I can feel the difference between say my ancestors mm. guides my clients ancestors source mm. like I want to ask you about this. I'm just going to call it again. I'll speak for myself. This tension between like being a human being in the world and getting messages and receiving messages. And it's kind of like, holy moly, like, what do I do with these things? Or sometimes I'll channel something about a particular month. I know you do monthlies as well. And I'm like, like it like, do you personally follow the messages you channel? Sometimes I'm like, sometimes I won't. And then I'm like, holy crap, this is coming up. Like, oh my gosh, like this is what it said. Like there would be this happening or, you know, like I feel like there, I think sometimes people have this misconception of intuitives as like being perfect and having it all together and, you know, wearing white linen and getting up at 5 a.m. to like meditate for through two hours every day. And like, we're just human beings, like doing the best we can as well. So like, do you ever, have you ever had moments where you're like, I don't want to listen or like, you know, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. Like, do, how do you work with the messages you channel for the collective? Yeah, it's hilarious. Sometimes I listen back in the middle of a month and go, oh yeah, that makes sense. Oh yeah, I can take that. And oh, I see what you mean by this now. <laughs> oh, yeah, like, all the time. Because there's um when you're channeling there can be this like energy separation for what's coming through and then it's then when you listen back as like Natalie if that makes sense when you listen back as yourself and then yeah. you're like oh yeah and also 100% getting messages that you do you don't want to receive like yeah. um <clears throat> it's intense or you're getting a message around a certain person or something that's in your life that you don't personally want to let go of yeah. or thing that you you know to be true it doesn't mean that you don't feel the human pain the human grief the human emotions around it yeah it's actually can sometimes be even more bittersweet because you can see the reasoning why you're shown you're shown why it needs to happen you're shown the future it can actually be more of a brain fuck because it's just like well, this is even more painful. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. And this is something I wanted to talk to you about in particular, because I've talked to you about this privately. And I feel like you're one of the few people who can relate where I think there is also this misconception around intuitives, especially intuitives who can, you know, future project or download messages from different timelines that like, we know everything or like then we have some kind of like secret code. And I think that for me, the more grounded I get in my intuition, the more I accept my intuition, the more I understand how little I do know and how actually for me being intuitive can feel, I actually like know the future less if I'm making sense to that for myself. Like it's more, like sometimes I think one of the uh, one of the main points of intuition, other than healing um, and other than guidance from the divine source, ancestors, you know, whatever you want to call it, something much greater than us, um, is to actually truly get us into the present moment. Because the longer I'm intuitive, the more I 
don't feel the need to prepare, the more I do, like even with talks or podcasts or classes, I'm like, when it's almost time, I'll be ready. And that really fucks with my um, perfectionism, my needing to feel like I'm over prepared, needing to know, needing to like I have trauma stuff. So wanting to feel safe and like I know and control stuff, it really messes with that because a lot of times I think a big aspect of being intuitive is truly being in the moment and showing up. 100%. 100% being in the present moment and and trusting and it sounds really cheesy but like trusting that you're held and supported to be in that space to be in the moment in the present to to show up as you like and giving yourself permission to be you 110 percent in that moment is is a game is 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 a game changer and i'm the same like Virgo rise here like control freak needs to have a plan needs to and people like well how does that work with intuition like because how does that fit how does that flow um and even as a kid really wanting to know all the details and the plans and Mm -hmm. get the control element and I think for me working with my intuition personally as you say is very much it's been this bringing it back to the moment, bringing it back to the present and just really trusting my, like a real a deep level of trusting and knowing on a, on an energetic body level and using the gifts to, to navigate the present versus it being some future projecting. There's yep. this element where I'm just like, there are sometimes I might get like glimmers or imagery of some imagery of the future, but it's not like I'm an intuitive sat there being like, okay, tell me what I need, th- what's going to happen for the next month or the next year. Or like, you know, how am I going to meet my partner? What's it? It's, it's not like future, future, future all the time. It is very much about learning to listen to the intuitive body, really listening on on, a, on those granular moments of what's coming through for me around the people I'm interacting with, the, the feelings, the thoughts, the emotions, the, the signs, the, the things that I'm receiving on a day-to-day basis. Yeah. And that also reminds me of what you said in the beginning of you know, sometimes there's this um, presentation of intuition as an ascension, a transcendence, when really we create the future from the present moment. So we have to be truly present or as present as we can be. I know for folks with trauma and Mm -hmm. body stuff and injuries and chronic pain, that can be more challenging. I know it's more challenging for myself, but I also know that when I do Am I when I am able to focus on regulating my nervous system, focus on my body, focus on understanding how messages come through, you know, and come in um, and show up for me, then that's when I can make more aligned choices and decisions, you know. Um, And you're right, it's not about like, oh, they're gonna have one blue eye and one green eye and you're go, I see many, many trees around. Like it's, I mean, it can be like that, you know, like it has been like that for me. It's like that sometimes with clients, but I also, also find like when I first started opening to my intuition, I got really specific things like that. And over time it's been less specific. And to this day, sometimes when I have see clients they'll give me very, very specific information. Like I had a client um, and I was like, I don't know, I'm just, I'm seeing like a headlamp or a lantern. And she was like, oh, I bought a headlamp yesterday, like the kind you wear in bed to read. And I'm, and I just started using it. There was no importance to it, but I know that I was given that information because she had doubts. Like she Mm -hmm. didn't, she was like, I don't know, this intuitive, you know, intuitive tarot reading, you know, like, and so it's, it was, I think the same thing for me, like I would get these very specific information and things would happen because I was sort of still doubting myself and now it's changed. um, And I think, no, it will continue to change. And I was wondering if you could share if it's changed like that for you over, over the years. Yeah, very much so. I completely agree on the visuals of how visuals changed. So when I was first starting, yeah, the visuals are very, like, very, very clear on those 
those things for myself personally and in readings as well. Um, and I loved how you share that, you know, sometimes you still get those visuals, the most random, random things that come through. Um, I had a client that the the message came through from a loved one that she, you know, around grapes, like the, the grapes, like, why aren't you eating the grapes? And she, she laughed and she said, I've had grapes sat on the sat on the counter for the last week and I haven't eaten them and they just keep <laughs> there. And I'm like, well, your your spirit team's telling me that you have to eat the grapes. So, <laughs> so it, it just is just brilliant. It can be as simple as that. Um, for me, I never used to think I I. I didn't think I had hearing, like hearing wasn't one of my like main gifts. I didn't think that I heard messages. I thought it was all very like knowing or feeling and seeing. And actually now most of my messages come through, they're very blended. Um, so they kind of all come through together as a blend. They're not kind of separate. They're very much as like a, um, like if you have um, like the spectrum of light, it's very much like it's all kind of combined, but it's made me realize how much I do receive through hearing. So it is through hearing and it does, it sounds like my own voice. And I, and I share that because I know a lot of people starting off are very much like, am I going to hear some strange voice? Am I going to hear some random person's voice in my head? And for me personally, I have had other people's voice like different voices that come through but predominantly it's my it sounds like me which is why it's that really important to you know create the space and bring it back to the present moment because that then helps you distinguish between like is this my thoughts or is this my ego voice or is this my fear like fear-based voice kicking in versus really like the intuitive voice coming in that I'm hearing and that wants to be channeled through. So, um, and that's taken time. That's taken practice. It's not, you know, again, it's that frustration when you first start something new, we expect it, uh, we're going to get it all at once. And it doesn't work like that. It takes practice to do this stuff. Like, and so anyone that's starting out and is getting frustrated that, it's not coming fast enough or they're not getting it the way they want to as well. They can be like, I really want to see messages and it's not happening. All I'll just say is like, go slow, be patient with yourself, be kind to yourself um, and just keep trusting that it's going to come in and, and take what you're getting. Like be like, be have gratitude for the receiving of the small little messages that you're getting. Cause that's huge. I could not agree more. I really think that listening to one's intuition really requires us to step again outside of this sort of binary paradigm of, well, if I do 10 laps in a pool every day and 10 squats and run around the block and write in my journal for 10 minutes, like there's not, yes, of course, there are baseline things and you go over them so well in your book. So I really suggest folks listening, if you haven't already picked up Natalie's book, I will put that in the show notes. It really is a must have. It's very, very informative, practical, so much information. It's so generous. So there are like commonalities, but just like you said, we're all unique human beings. So it's going to come through in a really unique way. You know, like I have a good friend who she calls herself the relationship psychic because she can always tell, did they just get together? Is one of them thinking of leaving? Like, just like, is there a power imbalance? Like, does one like someone more? Like, she's like, I need to, I, I hate this. Like, I need to figure this out for myself. Like, I'm like, yeah. And that's the other thing I wanted to say just for folks listening, you can be intuitive in one way, And also that means then you can be intuitive in other ways. Like our intuitions change, they grow, they they evolve over time. We just have to be open and, and listening to them. On the note of intuition changing and and accessing messages, I did want to actually, I was very intrigued by channeling with the Yoni steam. Like, how have you felt there been a difference? Uh, trying that technique. I've never done it before. Maybe I should try it. Maybe this is my message that I should try it. Do you just put herbs in it? Like, how do you, how do you do that? 
Yeah, so for me, it's like I will um, uh, I'll put different herbs in it. I actually purchase a, um, a blend um, that I've found online that's organic, that's, you know, you find, do the research of where the herbs and stuff come through, come from. Um, yeah, I boil it on 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 the stove, um, on the stove top, and then I move it in. I have like a, um, a like a little wooden stool chair, but I know people that you, you know you don't need to have the fancy stool to be able to do it. You can just find there are lots of different um, practitioners online, um, Instagram that um, will show you how to just to, to get set up. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, for me it's very much changed as I want to say tonally there's something very interesting on a deeper level again where it's not so up and out it's more down and in Mm. and exactly and I feel it's really connecting to I want to say mother earth very Mm. much more than mother sky like in that energy Mm -hmm. yeah so um yeah it's just t- tonally the information's changed and I just I it makes me feel more connected to the information flowing through my body mm-hmm. and again that element of using the body channeling the body the vest the intuitive body being the vessel and really honoring the body as part of the process versus it feet again it just it kind of energetically grounds it in the versus it feeling like it's coming from a different dimension if that makes sense again it's like it brings it back and makes it feel more anchored into this plane which for me then makes it feel really um relatable i had someone message me on instagram once being like how do you do it how do you like do you edit it do you like the tone of the voice like it just sounds really like relatable what do you do and i'm like nothing i i literally just write what wants to come through and i don't edit it so anything that comes on the podcast i don't go back once i've written it or channeled it i don't then go and spend two hours editing it it's like nope that's it boom there you go like and i trust that like even i don't change the grammar i don't change the punctuation like it's very much like that is the how it wants to be shared so that's what wants to is yeah that's it it'll help it uh intuitives listening doing things like this will help you get over your perfectionist <laughs> and your self-conscious stuff in like two weeks <laughs> like because you yeah and there are often times and still now like how many times i've i don't know how i've done so many of these and i still look back and after what you know i read through it at the end and i'm like wow I wrote, like, that came through. I wrote that. Like, there's still that, like, damn. Like, that. that's, and that's, <laughs> and that, again, it's that makes me feel, it's the humanness. It's, I'm still in shock and awe and wonder of what comes through. There isn't a complacency of, oh, yeah, I'm just going to channel this through and there you go. It's still like, oh, wow. Like, and I think that's also just really important to witness as well. So much came up for me as you were speaking. I'm so glad you're sharing all of this because it also reminds me that I think sometimes there's this misconception or I've sort of, I've kind of picked up on this idea in like the new age, um, I'll just say industry. I keep using that instead of community because I feel like, you know, they're not the same. Um, This idea that you have to be perfect You have to be skinny. You have to be white. You have to be rich. You cannot be in any physical pain. You cannot have a headache. You cannot have period cramps. You cannot, um, you know, just you have to be this idealized, aspirational, super, I mean, I'm just going to say it, like really toxic, um, you know, and, and for me as someone who has chronic illness and I'm frequently in pain, um, and, and don't see that as a reflection of my undeservingness or my not, I haven't ascended or whatever, you know, enough, I'm not enlightened enough or else I wouldn't have pain. That's just not true. Like I was wondering, like, if you also have seen messages like that and if like part of your mission has been to, really show people that anyone can have access and there's no like I feel like there's this 
idea that's also linked to um, capitalism of we have to be part when I'm not in pain, then I can be an intuitive when I, you know, whatever, have straight teeth or like whatever the hell externally, when I've healed, you know, when I'm totally healed from trauma, then I can uh, channel. Um, What do you, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, very much. And I see that also in client readings as well, where there's this energy of, when I've got all of this lined up, then I, I can do X, Y, and Z. And it's very much like it all feeds each other. So actually the, the, the trauma, you know, the experience that we've been through, the pain that we, that we're in actually is part of the power that give that we have in our sessions that makes us uniquely us, which is why people are drawn to us or, and also that it's part of the, you know, it's part of <laughs> what we're, we're experiencing again as hum, in human form. And so, yeah, that's it's something that has been coming up for me in, in looking at the spiritual business stuff, of especially on Instagram right now and, and things of just being like, wow, we've created, again, as you say, this need for it to look a certain way. It needs to be perfection. It needs to be, you know, especially right now, you need to be doing a reel or dancing or doing something now to get to seen heard. And so it's very much this kind of like, yeah, breaking down what that is. It's it's a knowing that we're human. We're never going to be perfect, N- none of us. And so just if if you're listening to this and you're like, you want to open up your intuitive gifts, like start. If you're someone that's like, I've got to have everything in order for me to create this new business or this new creative project, don't wait, just start. Because what you're experiencing is going to help the, your creative work flourish. Like you use that energy. It's part of what you're channeling through. Absolutely, 100%. Could not agree more. I wanted to talk on that note about integrity. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I wish they could see us like our little smile. Yeah. Uh, I had a client last week tell me that she she wanted my opinion because there was someone that she had was on social media and I'm not sure who the person is and it's not about who the person is but was saying that that we shouldn't be connecting to our guides ancestors and loved ones right now because they were being punished by the galactic federation um and that every time we called on them that we um were in that that meant that we were punishing our guides and I was just like wow I was just like that's insane and so I mean you you lost me at Galactic Federation (laughs) (laughs) I was just like gluten free GF because I can deal with that but I'm GF but I'm not GF GF, if you know what I'm saying I love you um I was just I was just like, and I just said to her, please, like, you practice discernment. Like, use your intuition. Practice discernment with the information that you're receiving. And again, it's anything that I sh- I'm sharing. I always say to people, like, take what you resonates with you and leave everything else behind. Like, because in the end, it's your intuition. It's your gifts. It's your body. It's your energy. Um, but that was just something on an integrity level where it's just there are a lot of people feeding on people's fear of what where we're at in the collective and what's happening and and making us making it sound like you can't connect to your team who are there to like support you and guide you and give you messages and shield you and support you that's like the complete opposite so yeah that's something on integrity that came up for me the last week (laughs) yeah I mean I think it's like and also if not now when like if you're not connecting to support outside of yourself now, you know, when, when would you be? I also think what I hear you say too, when you're sharing this, again, it's not about the person. And again, no shade to the Galactic Federation. I'm sure I'll meet you on the 5D and I'll have to eat my words here. I have to backtrack and do a public apology. So no shade to you. Um, But I, I, you're, what I'm picking up in on is this fear like a fe- like there's there's like fear mongering or like don't go outside if there's an eclipse or like don't do anything because Mercury's in retrograde or like you know I I don't like there's a lot of 
fear. Um, I get people, I'm afraid of calling in an evil spirit. What do I do? And, you know, I, I, there's that. And I also like on integrity, I also think that there's this issue as well, at least for me, of if you can't speak to what's going on politically or with injustice, and we're going back around, I love this lunar circular conversation of the ascension and the cosmos. It's like, if you can't speak to what's happening in reality, um, I, I don't know, like my, my discernment, that's where my discernment is. And it, so I was wondering if you could kind of offer the listeners some of your suggestions in terms of, you know, if they want to book a reading or, you know, just, just some things like just, just some, um, markers of integrity. Yeah, very much. Um, yeah, because in the end, if you're receiving a reading from someone, you're allowing them into your energy field, you're allowing them into your being and, um, you get really particular around who you allow in, who you want to work. And it's not just readings, it's body practitioners, it's massage therapists, it's doctors, it's even your hairdresser. Like, it's very... (laughs) It's who you're following on Instagram. And yeah, and who you're following on Instagram. Yeah, very, very much so. Because in the end, it's, it's all energy, it's all energy, Um, and energy that you're receiving. So practicing that energetic self-sovereignty, again, boundaries, clear energetic boundaries of who you and what you let into your space, into your, you know, into your field is really key. And so do the research and don't be, don't be afraid to also ask the questions of the people. If they're the right practitioner for you, they'll answer them, not just kind of bat, bat you off. So if you have really detailed, specific questions about who they are, what their practice is, um, you know, ask and don't be afraid to ask. Because I think very much right now we're, 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 we can be fearful to ask the questions because we don't want to seem to be wrong or stupid or whatever that, whatever that is for us. So I would say, ask the questions, practice discernment and just see how does this feel in my body? Like actually ask your intuitive body, how does this person's energy feel in my body? And if you get that, hell no, unfollow, don't have the session with them and trust yourself just because they have, you know, 200,000 followers doesn't mean that they're for you. Um, just because, just because, you know, that famous person follows them and shares about them doesn't mean they're for you. Um, so yeah, just listen or even just because they work for your friend and your friend recommends them doesn't mean that they're for you as well. So yeah, really practicing the discernment around that is is key. And I've learned that the hard way too, where I have allowed, you know, I've had a session where I've allowed someone into my energy field and then I've actually had to do more clearing and more work to remove their energy from my field than the, from the outside. And I'm like, why didn't I trust myself? Why didn't I, why did I allow that person into my body? And I've had to do some real hardcore work to get them to, leave been there (laughs) been there okay so before we pull some cards for you I do have some messages that came up um, and you can feel free to share or not share uh, your take on any of these but the first was The message I got was that you really are most interested in both career and love at this time. And it's sort of like love, career, career, love, almost as though you're feeling like you can't have one or the other or something like that. And um, or you don't know where to put your focus and you're feeling like, ah, you know, they're saying you can have both like both are there. The first thing they wanted to talk about was career. (laughs) Uh, And basically what they were saying is in the next 18 months to about like two years, your career is going, there's yet another transformation in your career. And it's not wrong. It's not bad. It seems to be some kind of mix of some things you were doing before what you were what you've been interested in that you haven't yet 
given yourself the time to explore yet and what you're doing now. It's going to be like a blender, you know, like there's just going to be a different rearrange of all of these things you're interested in. It's not like you're going to all of a sudden become like a circus performer. It's that you're going to be once again, integrating different aspects of what you want to be doing. They're also showing me that there's going to be kind of a more private side to what you're doing in the sense of it's either you like consulting with companies or you like consulting on screenplays or like going back into the media in some way or doing some writing or like some kind of thing where you'll get to work a bit more intimately behind the scenes. Um, Not a hundred percent, but like that's probably going to be kind of an aspect of it coming up. So if opportunities arise or if you get any kind of pings around those sorts of things, that would be really interesting. Um, They're really excited for you. Like it looks like it's going to be this really interesting new iteration. The other thing I have to say, they're like, you have to tell her this. There's also, and this could be like more down the line, like this could be like three years from now or five years. I don't even want to put a timeline on it, but there's also something that you're doing with this career rearranging and experimentation and transformation That is like you are truly embodying a new way to do business. And what that actually means is you are literally working seasonally, cyclically, making money in easy ways, or like you are figuring out truly how to live and to operate in this new paradigm of business in a way that not, they're saying like, A lot of people talk the talk, but Natalie's actually figuring out these different, these different ways to be and make money and be profitable and be abundant and, and also follow one's intuition. And it seems as though that will also at some point, or maybe as you are unfolding, might be part of your next mission is to really help people like really live in the new paradigm, like really step outside of the nine to five, the old uh, outmoded patriarchal capitalist ways of being, because they're saying you're very, they like, I think you know this, but they're like, Natalie is so gifted at making money. Like you're so gifted at being able to have that part of your life flow. Even if there's been times you haven't felt that when you look back, you're like, actually, this is a gift. I'm able, you don't necessarily, it appears as though you don't have a lot of blocks there, you know, like some people do. Um, And so that's like, really think about that. If like, you know, if it resonates long-term, the thing about love, (laughs) <laughs> i love how you said career love career love is so bang on it's so bang on <laughs> cool because everything's sort of figured out otherwise right like you know yeah, it really is so i just gotta ask have you ever dated a i'm putting this in quotes spiritual person before no, not at all. If we, the whole thing is just a bit like it just comes with that stereotypical spiritual kind of guy vibe which I just like ooh cheese the man the man bun yeah yeah like so not me at all <laughs> so they're sort of showing and again take what you'd like this is your life it's called free will baby you know that more than anyone maybe not spiritual i'm putting this in quotes but someone who's interested in professional personal development like a psychiatrist a facilitator of somatic um, you know, teacher, someone who has that interest. And they're sort of showing me that it would behoove you to be open to when the world is opening back up. If you are interested in any trainings or any like weekend workshops on topics in your area or even not, it might be that you meet someone who's also at the very least just interested in becoming a better person, 
in meditation, in, you know, nature walks and all of the things. They don't necessarily have to be like a psychic medium or a tarot reader, but someone who is more interested in helping others, being of service, and where you'll find that person is in those kinds of environments. You don't have to go to the Ascension rave on the beach, but <laughs> but like, you know, just so, like a, a personal development or some kind of training or some kind of workshop over the next again year, 18 months, if it feels only as you know, Nat, if it feels in alignment for you, if you're like, oh, that seems really interesting. I think I'll go like it's I, my weekend's free, like something like that. Just be open to that. Um, because it seems like it doesn't, I could be wrong, but it appears as though it's going to be a meeting um, in like in person. That's what it feels like. I keep getting it. And it's interesting you say that around, I've been very clear that it has to be someone with a mission and a purpose that's in that, in this space as well. And, and that there is a level of um, being conscious and being open to this work and the, you know, what's, what's going on on the planet. And yeah, that makes complete sense. Cause I've been very much like they, I need to, the, it's a group thing. It's me going, Oh yeah, I'm interested in them showing up. So thank you. Cause that's the vibe I've been getting as well. I love it. Do you want to ask the cards anything? <laughs> oh, um, and the stuff around business also makes complete sense. So thank you for those messages because they're really, um, really dialed in around the cyclical stuff and everything you shared. So that's all really, really bang on. So thank you. Um, I can take a lot from that. Um, what do I want to ask the question? Um, do I want to ask... Is there anything I'm not looking at? Is there anything that I that I'm not seeing? I think that's where I want to ask. <laughs> Every time I have a reading with someone, I'm that's what I ask. I'm like, what can't I see? What can't I know? I feel like that should be the intuitive's catch all. Like, yeah. show me what I can't see. Like, suggest what I'm not looking at. Okay, so here we go. Wow. Oh. Wow. Okay. So this is really fascinating. I'm going to need your help with this. Um, <laughs> so like, wow. Um, the first thing that's coming up, I'll show you the cards in a moment. The first thing that's coming up is like dreams with a capital, like D like all caps, like the big dreams, like being ready to go for it. Yes. Yes. You're ready not needing to necessarily know the how, just like being ready for that. The other thing that's really coming up too is any last vestiges around, well, there's now there's a couple things coming through as I'm looking at these cards, any last vestiges of heart healing that needs to be done. Um, it looks like this is uh, ripe for potential, like really like clearing out any lingering self-hatred or I'm not enough. And the last thing that's coming up, there's the mom piece that I'm seeing and I'll show you in a minute. The other thing is stuff, if there's any stuff around body image, any stuff around that. Um, I don't, yeah, you're, you're smiling. So <laughs> let me tell you why I'm saying this, okay? The first card we got was the four of pentacles. Now the four of pentacles is usually can go either way. It can either be someone who's keeping themselves safe with like boundaries and being really smart about how they're spending their money and just being very grounded and um, in their like very, being very practical around both their physical boundaries and their financial boundaries. But it could also mean someone who is like not addressing that, who is contorting themselves uh, in an unnatural way around body stuff, around business stuff, around financial stuff, and around ancestral stuff, because pentacles have to do with ancestry. The other reason why I said mom and love and more body, oddy, oddy, is because we got the empress. We got the empress card. And we know the empress card is about love. The, the planet, the archetype that corresponds to empress is Venus. This is unconditional love. And what sometimes comes up with this card is how we were taught or not taught unconditional love through the matriarchal line or through someone who was our 
primary caregiver. And for many people, that is the mother or the grandmother. It is the matriarchal kind of side, usually, not always, but often. So I also am seeing this like readiness to be able to separate yourself from any programming that was given to you from that matriarchal line as part of your ancestral healing, as part of your heart healing. And with that obviously comes some grief, but after that will come the blossoming that always accompanies the Empress because the Empress is about really blooming in your own garden, really paying attention to your own cycles of death, birth, renewal, life, and also being able to fully receive, Mm. to receive your own intimacy, your own love, to receive other people's offerings, to not feel like you have to hold back. That's that four of pentacles of like, I can't be all the way, or I can't totally be vulnerable, or I can't really show up in my power. That's a big thing. Like I can't really shine bright like a diamond because someone's going to judge me or I'm going to be made fun of, or I'm going to be made separate. And like, that is a whole thing that we have when we're doing ancestral healing is the separateness and wanting to belong, but you're really ready to belong as yourself to yourself, you know, in a way that is really nourishing and healing. And the other card that came up, which is why I said like big dreams and healing, you got the star. Oh, yeah. What do you think of when you when you think of the star? Yeah, it's all about for me, when you were talking about it in that relationship to everything else, it's very much like shine, like shining in your truth, shining in your potential, shining in your energy. Again, there's this element of like, not you just do you like, that's really, really important. And I feel that that's been this really big learning um, ancestrally and the stuff with the ancestral line with mother, grandmother and heart healing. There's been a lot coming up for that for me in this eclipse portal around that. So I've been doing a lot of deep um, heart healing around that. The stuff around body makes complete sense. I've been doing a lot of um, just really looking at the this vessel, this body, and the and honoring it in new ways, and knowing that this is this is it. This is all I have is this body. And really, I've been doing a lot of like cleansing and looking at my gut and looking at the things I haven't been look like really looking at and really kind of unpacking what that looks like in my own body and how that feeds into my gifts and who I am and um yeah and the th- everything around relationships and really you know doing that I feel like it just feels like I'm about to meet someone and so there's this element of doing all that final heart healing and really um well it's ongoing healing but it's like <laughs> the remnants of of um of where it's at right now just feels like I'm being prepped like that's what I feel like right now so everything that you've shared is just as always completely bang on and I also just want to like affirm Uh, how amazing like all of that is I feel like for listening to you it's really inspiring to me to keep going on what I need to keep going on and the thing that also came up as I'm looking at these cards and listening to you talk is this feeling of um, being able to exhale and to feel safe to feel safe both in the body and as yourself to feel both appreciative and grateful to your matriarchal ancestral line and also be your own sovereign vessel of whatever it is you need to be for you and like being really open to transforming uh in the key and tone of some of your biggest dreams and really being committed and devoted to it happening like on a vibrational level that really makes sense and being able to receive it so I also see your like you're like expanding your receiving capacity and your belief capacity, right? Because the star is about hope and faith and belief in the self, in healing, in the greater cosmos, in your part of the greater world, in your constellation. And the empress is so much about unconditional love and receiving and being able to like 
really truly relax and be worthy and be adored and be received so i think that's like it all seems to line up and unfortunately it's not anything you don't know i'm not you know you're like what don't i know what am i not it seems like you're right doing all the things it wasn't anything there's nothing about like you know i don't know (laughs) (laughs) some something out of the blue you know what i mean yeah and i think that you know even as an intuitive you can uh, you can some you can question the messages you're getting and you can question the energy that you're receiving and so this is like hello natalie this is a confirmation just keep fucking walking keep receiving <laughs> keep doing it so yes <laughs> Thank you so much, Natalie. I'd love for you to share um, if there's anything coming up for you in July, August, uh, where folks can find you, what you're excited about, all of that, all of that good stuff. I know folks are going to want to know. Yeah. So um, yeah, my Instagram, I am Natalie Miles, website, natalie-miles.com. Um, in July, I'm finishing up a series um, called Grief, Death, Love. And the love part of that series is happening in July. Um, I have, um, yeah, um, these doorway activations. So recently I've been recording these kind of activations to help you through different things like let it go, emotional body reset, trust yourself, soul gifts. Yeah. So those have been things that I've been doing. Yeah. I mean, for me, I'm in this space right now of really recalibrating what it all looks like. Yes, I think we're all there, baby. <laughs> There's a big if, shift if going you're, on. If you're not there, I don't know who, if you've been asleep because it's, yeah, it I is just, recalibration station nation. Yeah. It's, it's a time for me where I'm just, yeah. Like really looking at what stays, what goes, what does work look like and really kind of opening it up. I love it. It was such a pleasure. Thank you so much for being so open and so vulnerable and for sharing your time with us. Oh, thank you. It's such an honor and a, and a pleasure to chat with you as always. Thank you. Okay, my dears, that was it. I hope you feel inspired and nourished by this conversation. If you haven't already, pick up Natalie's book, follow her on the internets, and send her a comment, write her a comment about how what she shared here resonated with you. Listen to her podcast. All the links are in the show notes. And I will be back soon. Thank you so much for being here with me. Moonbeaming is brought to you by The Moon Studio. It is created and hosted by me, Sarah Faith Godestiner. It is edited by the incredible Caitlin George Parker. Additional support is by Stella Hartman. Music is by Will Owen and myself. If you like this podcast, you can support us by going to Patreon backslash The Moon Studio and becoming a patron. You can give this podcast five stars wherever you listen and also subscribe. We'd love it if you could let one or two or three or four or more friends know about us and we accept all good vibes. Thanks so much for supporting us. Witches on planet Earth, not flying up to Mars. There is no planet B. There's a witch wherever.